All right, welcome back to season three of our show. And today it's beef bones indoors. Let's show you how to get this done. So right here, I have a six pound rack of beef bones. Now these are the short rib, the big portion of the short rib. Look how big these are. And normally we put these on the grill. Now we're gonna show you how to get these done indoors and have them just as tasty, if not more to some. First thing we're gonna do, all the silver skin on the top right here, you can see it. We need to trim all that off. Otherwise, when you bite into these guys, you're not gonna have a very good bite. You're gonna to have to fight with that silver skin and it's not a very good bite. So let's just get this turned around. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go very gently up under that silver skin, just like that. And I'm gonna to start to work my way in, just work my way back. Once I open that up, I'm gonna to start to just get my knife in here, and just go up the side of that. Very gentle. Until I have that nice piece of silver skin lifted back. I'm just gonna keep following in and get my knife right up under there. And then when you see it, just follow the silver skin. Stay really close to the top of that. Trying not to get hit all that good meat. I'm using just the tip of my knife to pull this back. You can see that. Look at all that silver skin. So just use the tip of your knife pulling the meat back this way. Let's go that way with it. And just bring it back. Go nice and easy with that. Like I said, just use the tip of your knife like that. Till you get to the end. I'm gonna take the knife peel it back. See how even that is now? Now you're able to get all of this silver skin out of here like that just by using the tip of your knife. Just keep pulling back on it. Try not to hit any of that delicate meat. And watching your fingers at the same time. Just come back as far as you can get it. And if it breaks or falls apart, you're gonna have to start it over. But while you got a good layer of that, look at that, see? You got a good layer of that, just keep it moving. You're on a roll, stick with it. Because you got it started, so don't let it go. Just like that. Now we're getting to the point where I'm coming into some good fat, so I want to start going up this way with it. So I'm going to start taking it and bringing it back up this way. Now everybody has their different ways of doing this. This is mine. So I'm no trained butcher, but I can get the job done, that's for sure. Those guys. They definitely get the job done. Mine might take a little bit longer, but look at that. Now here's a whole piece of silver skin. And I don't think I wasted much meat on there. All right, I'm gonna get the cutting on this and we're gonna meet you right back here. So stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, so we got this fat off of here and now let me show you what to do from here. Now that we clean this up, there's some fat over here. Now this spot is bald right here. So what we're gonna do is take our knife and we're gonna get some good fat from this side and put that good fat over here to keep that meat nice and moist. 
because why not use this nice pocket of fat that you have right here and just transplant it. Most people will trim this off, throw it away. Don't do that. You want it real thin so it just melts down into the meat. And some of it might fall off during the cook if you move it, but you're not moving this thing around, so don't worry about it. There's no need to move it. Once it hits this tray over here, it's there. It's stationary and ain't going nowhere. Alright, so let's just get this nice and thin. And all you need is just a sliver of this to keep that moist. And you can see all that beautiful marble in there. That's all nice fat, so you're not going to have any problems with that. It's just this piece over here. You want to just stretch this piece out just a little bit over here. I'm going to get some fat off the end of here and just bring it over. This is good fat. It's nice and soft. It's kind of almost melting in my hand. And a couple of pieces of that is all you need. All right, so let's just get some of that out of there. Right over to this side, just to protect that meat. And this side, you got this side all nice and trimmed down too, so don't waste all that fat and trim it off and throw it away because you could just transplant it, just like that. Here we go. So just those slivers of fat in there are gonna make all the difference in the world as far as keeping this piece of meat moist and succulent. And there you have it. All right, so let's season it now. So what we'll do is gonna get a little bit of cooking spray on here. Just a little bit. Here's some rub. Garlic powder, onion powder, paprika. A little bit of cumin. Now don't forget, we're going inside with this. So there's no smoke inside so smoke is a seasoning and right now you have none of it so the back of its old bones so what we'll do is get a good douse of that on here just like that black pepper good old douse of that now we're not going to put the salt because I don't want to dry this meat out. We'll put the salt at the end and let it melt into the meat. After it comes out of the oven, you'll salt it. But if you salt it now, and you cook it in an oven, you're going to dry this thing right out. So don't do that. Salt it afterwards. Alright, so we got that nice bit of pepper on there. That was a 16 mesh. That's why it looks so heavy. And time. Dry time. Now on the barbecue, I don't usually do this. I don't add these flavors because I let that smoke speak for itself. I like to go on with salt and pepper, but indoors, in the oven, you gotta give this guy some flavor. So, give it some flavor, and you won't regret it. It's a good amount of the time there. That's it. I'm just gonna pat it in. And this spot in front right here, I'm just going to rub my hand around the board. Pick up some of this stuff right here and just rub it in the front here. Because this is not seasoned. So just rub that in the front. No pun intended, rub that in the front. Alright. So just pat that in the front. Like that, off the top side get it in there now inside since you're going inside I'm using a tray you want a tray high enough and elevated enough to get this thing up off of the bottom and on the top now if you use a cookie tray I'm going to show you this look how low that is if I put a cookie tray here and see how low that is to the ground so if I put the meat here there's no air getting up under there and it's going to have some problems getting in some air so you want that height from here to here you want that height and you want to get this up on the rack like that 
And once it's up there, don't touch it. Leave it alone, let it cook. We're gonna go with 285 and we're gonna go until it's done, which is about five and a half, six hours with this. So stick around, don't go anywhere. Go right in and turn my handles around and get this in here. Just like that. And there we go. We'll meet you back here in six hours. Don't go anywhere. All right, we are on that last hour. I'm just gonna probe these. So we're about five and a half hours in. And what I like to do is I'll take this pitchfork, no thermometer, and I'll just go through. If it goes through like butter, like that, you know they're ready. See, nice and tender. All right, I'm gonna let these go for about six more minutes and we're gonna meet you onto the chopping block. So stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, here we are, season three's chopping block. Beef bones indoors, let's show you what we got. Look at those guys. Now, these were about five and a half hours old total. I let them rest for about 20 minutes. And this is what we got. So let's go cut into these guys and show you what we got. Now I'm just gonna hit this on an angle in between the bones. What I like to do is just go right down on the first bone. Now keep in mind, there's not gonna be any smoke ring on these. And we get through and I left the membrane on the backs because they're oven cooked. So there's no, I'm just gonna chomp through that membrane. There's no smoke ring because they're cooked in an oven. And I'm just gonna find my bone here and even it out. There we go. Let's put this one back. Actually, you know what? We're just gonna show you everything. Look at that. Beautiful. I'll show you this one. And look at that beautiful crust on there. And let's cut into one. Let's get this off the bone. Show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna hold this one here for plating. And we're just gonna cut this one right off the bone, which is gonna fall off the bone. I'm just gonna go like that. And get it off the bone the rest of the way. Just bring it around. It's still hot. Now watch this. Right through like butter. Just come right through. Let's give that a pitmaster try. Beef ribs indoors. Fantastic. This goes to show you guys that you don't need a smoker to do this. As a matter of fact, there's times I get tired of smoke and I'd rather prefer an indoor rib. Just because sometimes you get tired of things and you don't have to have smoke all the time. Different seasonings, different rub. It's indoors. You got the ease and convenience of your oven. And most ovens are insulated. So that means no basting. You won't have to baste this at all to keep it moist. If you're cooking in an insulated oven, it's the same thing as cooking in an insulated cooker. So for people that brag about their insulated cookers, your oven does the same thing. All right, let's show you what this looks like on a plate. So we're just gonna take this board here. We're just gonna put that beef right on it. 
So, this is not going to be anything fancy. This dinner we're having tonight dates back to my childhood. We're having beef ribs, white rice, and hogmores. Now, hogmores, we're going to leave a link in the description to this video. And you'll get to see these hogmores being made. And the hogmores are excellent. So for those of you that don't know what hogmores are, they're pig stomach. And this dates back to my childhood. So here's the hogmores. You guys get to see this being made. Traditional recipe. I mean, this goes back a long ways. So we're going to plate this up just like that. We're going to use a little green onion on this. And what goes on traditionally, hot sauce. And you could use a decent hot sauce on there, but this is how this gets plated. And those of you guys that know exactly what this is, you got to see that recipe. So it's a lost recipe. Some people lost it. Some people don't remember how to make it because they haven't made it in years. But this is it. And we all know that it gets plated up with just white bread. And there it is. I'm using potato bread. All right. We're going to get situated. And we're going to meet you guys right back here. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, and there it is. Oven beef bones cooked to perfection. Nice, easy, simple recipe for you guys to follow cooked indoors. We served them with a classic Hogmore dish. And we're going to leave a link in the description to those Hogmores there. That way you can check that out. That dates back many, many moons ago. Hopefully you get a chance to look at that and enjoy it. We thank you guys for coming. We enjoyed having you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like. Until next time, gotta get that little pit master taste there.